May the love and peace of the Lord be with us all, as we listen to today's Gospel and Reflection. Let us now listen to the Word of God. April 19, 2024 Friday of the third week of Easter A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John Therefore, the Jews debated among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? And so, Jesus said to them, Amen, Amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will not have life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink, Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father has sent me, and I live because of the Father, so also whoever eats me, the same shall live because of me. This is the bread that descends from heaven. It is not like the manna that your fathers ate, for they died. Whoever eats this bread shall live forever. He said these things when he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. The Gospel of the Lord Reflection Have you considered how the Eucharist, as the source of eternal life, enriches and sustains your spiritual journey? Amen, Amen, I say to you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. John 6 verses 53 to 55 On a philosophical level, it's useful to consider various things that appear to be competing forces. Good appears to be the opposite of evil. Light, the opposite of dark. Heat, the opposite of cold. And life, the opposite of death. But are they truly opposites in the sense of being competing forces? When considered carefully, it is clear that good and evil, light and dark, heat and cold, and life and death are not actually competing forces, rather, evil is simply the absence of good, darkness, the absence of light, cold, the absence of heat, and death, the loss of life. And though this philosophical distinction may not seem that interesting to some and confusing to others, it is a helpful truth to ponder in light of today's Gospel. Today's Gospel tells us that failure to eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, results in death. Death is the loss of life, and the Eucharist is the source of life. Jesus says that if you fail to eat his flesh and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. This bold teaching of Jesus should cause us to stop and examine our approach to the Most Holy Eucharist. Sometimes we can fall into the trap of thinking, that going to Mass and receiving Communion is something we do as a favour to our Lord. But in truth, it's God's most profound favour to us because the Eucharist is the gateway to eternal life. And without it, we have no life within us. Our spirits die because we lose the presence of God. Looking at the negative effect of not receiving the Most Holy Eucharist can be very useful. Sometimes, we need to consider the consequences of our actions as a way of motivating us to greater fidelity. For that reason, considering the fact that failure to eat the flesh of the Son of God results in death should be very motivating. It should fill us with a holy fear of the loss of the life-giving presence of God within us. This holy fear is a true gift from God and is in fact one of the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Reflect today upon your interior attitude toward the Most Holy Eucharist. Do you see your participation in the Holy Mass 
more as a favor you offer to our Lord? Or do you see it as it is, the life-giving source of eternal life? Reflect upon how important this precious gift truly is and recommit yourself to a faithful and devout participation in this most holy gift. Let us pray. My Eucharistic Lord, your flesh and blood are truly the source of eternal life for all who receive you in faith. I thank you, dear Lord, for this most precious gift of the most holy Eucharist, and I pray that I will be filled with a deep hunger and thirst for you always. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Thank you for listening to today's Gospel and Reflection. We hope that our small effort gave you a bit of inspiration as you journey your day with God. Please give us a like so this will reach to as many people as possible. Again, thank you and may God bless us all.